I'm going to speak today about something I feel very passionate about. Uh, and I was told by the Trudeau Foundation that I should take this opportunity to do just that. And I'm going to talk about the many ways in which uh, health science is spun, the many ways that it is twisted by social forces, by the media, and by the market. I hope that you find this, this talk interesting and maybe a little bit fun uh, and a little bit useful. But I'm also very interested in your own thoughts uh, on what I feel is an incredibly important topic, and that is uh, how we can get to the truth of what makes us healthy. So what I'm going to talk about today, uh, now has everyone recognized this individual as Gwyneth Paltrow? Does anyone not recognize Gwyneth? Well, as everyone knows, Gwyneth Paltrow is one of the most famous actors in the world, and she also uh, assumes that she is a health expert. And for my latest book that comes out uh, in the near future, I actually followed Gwyneth very closely and all the advice that she provides. And she is a wonderful example of how advice about health, how information about health is literally everywhere. So I've structured my talk a little bit around a few questions from Gwyneth. Uh, what is the impact of the confused and, and conflicted health messages that are out there? And as I'll see, I'll go through some of the evidence. Uh, there is a lot of evidence to support the fact that, yes, the health messages are tremendously uh, confused. And this is having a tangible impact uh, on, on the health of our population. What are the forces that twist health science? And is it really Gwyneth's fault? Uh, yes, it is a little bit Gwyneth's fault. I will turn to the impact of celebrities on this story. Uh, but as we'll see, there are, there's lots of evidence about how health science and how, how health information uh, in general gets twisted. Uh, and then I, I am going to conclude with some uh, recommendations. I'll pepper them throughout my talk about what we really can do to, to be healthy. And I'm sure everyone in this room has thoughts on this also. But I think it's true that we can almost ignore all of the information that is out there in popular culture about health. Now, I have a warning. Uh, before I proceed, uh, that I am going to ramble. And by that I mean I'm going, there's so much information out there that is relevant to this topic that I've taken this opportunity as a Trudeau uh, scholar to, to really uh, talk about th some of the things that I'm fascinated in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick uh, and choose, do some cherry picking on some of the things that I'm fascinated in. I'm also going to speculate. I'm go some of the things that I'm going to talk about, some of the conclusions are, I admit, speculation. Uh, but I think, again, this is a, a wonderful opportunity to do just that and to reflect on the evidence that I've looked at over the tw my 20-year career. And then I'm going to, con to conclude with some obvious statements. Uh, but I think that's okay, too, because I think th these are incredibly important conclusions. Uh, one more caveat before I proceed. Um, I, I always think it's important for scholars to say what their biases are, to say what their conflicts are, and my, my bias is I always assume, whenever I, I hear anything about health in the popular press, whenever I see anything about health in the news, I assume that nothing works. Uh, and history tells us that is almost always the case, particularly when you're talking about diet and fitness, which is tremendously important to the fighting of chronic disease. But I think you can almost always assume that nothing works. And I think this is an important point of view to take because I do think that kind of skepticism is healthy. Uh, I, I, for me, I need a lot of good evidence now to convince me that almost anything works. 